This week, Minister of Finance Kyle Schleitwein delivered the midterm budget for 2016, announcing intensive budget cuts across all platforms. A total of 5.5 billion was identified as expenditure cuts during the mid-year re budget review. The expenditure cuts are urgently needed due to the downward revision in budget revenue estimates of about 6.23 billion and the limited scope for further increasing public debt through borrowing. This is a necessary collective course of action and each and every budget vote has contributed to this objective. Schleitwein revealed that several new development projects will be put on hold to save Namibia from further extending its public debt portfolio. Cabinet has placed a moratorium on the construction of new office buildings and as such major office buildings such as the new parliament building for instance are examples of this measure. In reality, new development projects will only enter the expenditure framework as fiscal space that is consistent with the fiscal stance and adjustment path emerge. Namibia's economy grew by 2.5% rather than the projected 4.3%. We chat to Danny Kavishe, market research manager from FNB Namibia, about how the midterm budget will affect the man on the street. Good evening viewers and welcome to this exclusive broadcast. Everyone has been on the edge of their seats anticipating the midterm budget announcement. Now as our Minister of Finance Carly Schleitwein said, the Namibian economy has never been in such a precarious situation. With us in studio is Danny Kaviche, Market Research Manager from FNB Namibia. Hi Danny. Hi Alna. It's Thanks for joining here. us. Yeah, fun times. <laughs> yes. Now Danny, um, there were some surprises this year, nothing big. Um, but really the big emphasis was on cutting spending. Um, can you give us just a brief overview of what led us to where we are with the budget now? Okay. There are a few things that led us to what the ministers called a precarious position. Over the past few years, we have practiced both an expansionary fiscal policy and an expansionary, or what people would call an accommodative monetary policy. What this has led to is that there's been an increase in expenditure across the board in the economy. And unfortunately, uh, most people believe that the cuts needed to have started a little bit sooner. Mm. The government or central bank should have signaled to the market with either one of the policies that we do need to rein in some of the expenditure and some of the appetite that we've had for credit. And unfortunately, this didn't take place. Mm. And so coming into this given year, uh, initial expectations of growth of about 4.4% that the government state have been revised down to 25 simply because they have taken note of the fact that businesses are starting to slow down. Mm -hmm. Consumers are feeling pressures externally from a rise in interest rate environment and also due to the inflationary pressures that are associated with that. But then additionally, government reining in its expenditure in one go has meant that a lot of people who have relied on government businesses have not been able to receive their disbursements for a lot of projects across the country. And so as an economy, we get, we're getting hit left, right and centre. Minister drew attention not only to the fact that this has been taking place in Namibia, Namibia, but he mentioned that regionally growth has been subdued. Mm. And as well globally, with the IMF revising downwards, the initial projections of about 33 3 to 3.5% down to 3.1%. So we are coming into a cycle where there is a slowdown within mm. the market and everybody needs to adjust. And I mean, if you look at our neighbours, um, as the Minister uh, mentioned, South Africa is down to 0.1% um, outlook and economic growth. That's almost static. Mm. Um, so yes, those external pressures are there. And that brings us to this greater message that he's been talking about curbing spending. Yes. Um, now, there are various ways that he's proposed that we do that. Um, before we get to taxes and everything else, um, what, what are the things that he's proposed for the operational budget? It's, it's quite interesting, maybe if we can just backtrack a bit, yes. that this, the minister has come in even last year already, and he came out with the four billion that he had amassed uh, for savings, and which later went into reallocation. And this year there's the figure that's been thrown around of 5.5 billion, of which he proposes four and a half should be suspended expenditure. 
and of which one billion should be reallocated to areas where he believes that it would draw more attention in terms of development and also try and bridge that gap between the inequalities that exist in our economy, pardon me. And so if you look at more the operational budget, he speaks about a 2.7 billion um, cut in terms of the suspension of the activities. And this potentially will excite most of the population that for several years have argued that in terms of the personnel that are employed in government, the freeze of that has already amassed about six, 633 million, excuse me. Sure. And he's also been able to show us that through savings for the S&T allowances that have been given, he's also been able to amass about 500 million, give or take. And this is a good signal to the public. Pe the people have been calling for this for several years, simply saying that in terms of the government's budget and expenditure, what is going to day-to-day -day operations is just a tad bit too much yes. and unpalatable for most people. And in as the you said, I think that's what that's what the public wants to hear: cutting yes. spending on SNTs, on expensive government cars, yeah. and on new buildings, for instance, like the new Parliament building. There's also been a moratorium put on that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And we see that um, there's a list that he sends in his documentation in terms of the capital projects that have been halted and. Truly, it's across the board. A lot of construction work that was meant mm. to take place has either been halted, um, if it was in design stage, completely eradicated, you know, or rather to be reviewed after a few years. We've seen expenditure on some of the roads, for example, the Windhoek Kahanja Road, where he's cut it from about 130 million that was initially budgeted, and he's managed to save, you could say, that about 80 million of that sure. portion. And what that actually means to the contractor, of course, uh, might be a little bit dampening because mm -hmm. these are revenues that you ex expect in this cash flow management mm -hmm. that you need to now review. But ultimately, I think government stance is, is simple. What, what's a priority mm -hmm. for us right now? And what can we really not, um, what can we really ensure that we're spending on mm -hmm. to keep the economy afloat as opposed to projects which we may perceive to be important, but may not necessarily have those long-term goals so and you've got that So you've got that trickle-down problem where there are a lot of you know, Namibians who are reliant on government tenders, yeah. and a lot of them are going to be stopped. But as you said, you know, it's, it's crunch time. Yes, there it is. There's no other way. It is. Yeah. And uh, coming to that as well, the hope is that people will be a little bit more innovative mm -hmm. within the market. I think that's additional to what you're saying. If you've had one supplier over several years running as a business, what that means is that you simply don't shut down. Mm. You just have to look at other businesses mm -hmm. or potentially other areas in which you can invest. And the minister has alluded to that. Uh, he, he keeps speaking very frankly throughout his whole speech about increasing partnerships mm. Uh, mm. with the private sector. He keeps speaking about potentially reviewing bankable investments. Mm. He talks about the fact that he wants to partially list some of the entities that sit under government. And what he's really trying to signal to the market is that what we have viewed as government investment, mm. taking up such a big portion of Namibian economics, so to speak, needs to be sort of realigned. And let's mm. allow the private sector to participate a little bit, a tad bit more, mm. in more critical areas. Um, the idea is, I think he believes, the efficiencies that exist in the private sector will be able to buoy the economy through mm. this period. Oh, and um, now moving a little bit onto the revenue stream. Sure. Um, I think only 42% of our revenue has, been, has come in thus far, up to September. Um, and there is a problem. And obviously we can cut on spending, but the government still needs to make money. Yeah, sure. Um, so how, how is the minister, how did he say that they're going to address this additional revenue shortage? Yes, well, you know, if... You were looking at the economy about a month ago mm. and you had to be completely objective. It, it makes sense that the government would have to increase taxes across the board, irrespective of what name it gives it. Yes. Simply because you've been relying for several years on receipts that are expected to come in from SACU mm. and that seems to be drying up. Mm. Uh, you miss or you have a re-estimation of that revenue line tells you that you have to look internally. That means tax on businesses and tax on individuals. Mm. So we can name them whatever it is we'd like to call them. But ultimately what the minister is saying is that for us to be frugal, we will need to tax mm. to increase our revenue base from, from one perspective. And there now, are various ways that he suggests we're going to do that. Yes, yeah. I mean the presumptive tax has been mentioned not only this year but the year before. 
uh, and I think the term he used in this budget is presumptive tax on small units. Now, administratively, there's still a lot of debate as to how this will happen, but mm. the full proposal will be on display next year when the budget gets uh, released. Um, he speaks about um, the solidarity uh, mm. wealth tax being transformed mm. into a more income, I think he calls it high income wealth based so tax. The solidarity along tax is still on the table. It's still on the yes. card, but the re there's been a redesign of it. Mm. I think the redesign ultimately is basically saying that we're going to need to target it mm. to the high income earners within the market. Okay. Again, administratively, I wouldn't have full information on how that will sit, but it's all in line with the fact that Previously, we've had <coughs> broad-based taxes across the market, and now he's saying maybe we need to target them in sectors where we can actually get the revenues Definitely. that we're expecting. Uh, from the business perspective, we've seen you know revenue collections have been mm. a tad bit mm. poor, mm. and minister again will try and squeeze left, right, and centre as as yeah. as much as possible so he can gather everything else. And he's simply also because cutting on exemptions as far as exactly, I mean. but mm. I mean ultimately simply because he's trying to communicate to the public that mm. there are two ways in which government really r runs its budget. It's either through tax revenue or through debt. Mm. And debt now is expected to balloon to about 42% public debt to GDP before tapering down sure. to 35% after 2018, 2019. And the indication to that is, again, it is quite high, mm. but not high if you compare it to first world first countries, world countries yeah. you know, who yeah. sit with 100%, 120%. Unfortunately, in the brackets that we've been put by our rating agencies, we need mm. to be compared to what they consider to be our peers. Mm. And if they've been averaging about 40 or 42 percent, then we need to be around about those lines. The 35 percent that we have become comfortable with previously was actually self-imposed. Mm. And, and now the, the idea is, I think there will be deeper discussions regarding that, mm. the necessary but the debt that sits within the market is necessary, yes. provided, of course, it becomes productive. That yes. is, it goes to the right sectors. Mm. But then additionally, the debt that we have taken up, there are costs to services mm -hmm. over the following years, which is quite expensive for, for, government, um, uh, for government management of its funds. Mm. So those are the dynamics that we're currently working with. Um, and let's just quickly look at the de developmental budget. Um, there are re really reallocations, sorry, of funds. Yeah. Um, the largest chunk of it has gone to the Nekital Dam project. Um, so would we say that money has been cut from these ministries' operational budgets, but these areas are still important enough to be prioritised and to be re reallocated funds to? I, th I think um, you put it quite uh, mm. correctly in saying that. Um, you, you notice that um, uh, UNAM as well and NAST mm. still received reallocations about 100 million each uh, across the board, so which speaks to the area of education. Nickel told them, mm. you speak about it as well, as being a, imperative for government's future outlook as to what the country really needs on a long term basis. And yes, um, it is important. I think in other parts of his documentation, he also speaks about increasing the allocation to the economic sectors. Mm -hmm. And what he's trying to translate is saying that, yes, we're slowing down, yes, we're cutting back, but we need to think five years from now, we need to think mm. 10 years from now. Mm. And we cannot hinder growth during those periods by mistakes that we could potentially make right now. So we will receive it, I think the public at least will, in a mm. positive way, knowing that most of our investment projects that we've been banking on over the past few years mm. will continue as proposed. Unfortunately for some of our business people and some of our contractors that were relying on the you know, operations of government, especially when it comes to administration blocks that they've built in offices, mm. and simply that being shut down or the amounts being uh, readjusted downwards. Unfortunately to, for them, business will be a bit tight. Mm. But you know, looking at it more in a five to 10 year view, I think what the minister has presented is the best he could do given the resources mm. that he had at the time. Definitely, Danny. Mm. Now, now, just to sum things up for us, um, there are certain messages, and I think the greatest message to the public out there was saving. Mm -hmm. um, so is there really any other messages around this that you think we should take home with us? I think saving goes hand in hand with investing. Mm. Um, I think to the general public, um, the main communication is as things tighten, um, whatever capital flows or whatever capital savings that people had can be invested in sectors or in areas which can still potentially show growth. 
Now, it may seem hazy right mm -hmm. now for a lot of people as to which areas they exist, but I mean, this is why our financial advisors exist. This is why, uh, you know, you look at the sectors in the economy, our economists exist, mm -hmm. so to speak, to direct you to areas which potentially are still showing growth. Because uh, the old attitude that simply save, keep your money under the mattress mm -hmm. when things are very tough, simply doesn't work. You can make um, your money grow. Yes. You can make your money grow. And that's, mm -hmm. the, that's the intention um, and communication that's been s said out there. Notwithstanding, of course, that prices are going up. And what that means is when people are going to walk into shops, whatever it is that they've been buying comfortably for $500, simply the bags are going to get smaller mm. and smaller. Mm. And that could, can be anticipated over two to three years. Um, it will also be a good time for people to spend time speaking to those who have gone through periods of slowdowns. Mm. And the minister says that, you know, you adjust to it. Mm -hmm. um, it's not really anything else that uh, the population can do. It's simply tweaking your expenses at a time when things that you may have become comfortable with over several years simply have to be stopped mm -hmm. and for you to readdress to what are your priorities. Definitely, Danny. Thank yeah. you very much. It was a great brief overview. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Not at the moment. You're good. <laughs> <I'm> good. <laughs> Guys, that will be all from us. You can watch the show repeat. Uh, tonight at 6.30 and then Sunday at 7.30. Join us Monday where we have Danny in studio to talk a little bit more about Namibia's economic outlook.